Hello, hi Raju ji, Kamal from Mera Sangeet and a warm welcome to you once again on our show Chat in Chai. Always a pleasure Kamal ji, thank you very much, Pranam. Pranam Raju ji, how are you? Very well, thank you. And what is the immigration reforms bill? Today, Democrats are trying to break the blockage that was created by the Republican Speaker of the House. Um, John Boehner received the approved version of an immigration reform bill from Senate, which is like Rajya Sabha in India, or the House of Lords in, in, in UK, sort of like that, not quite. And um, it got stuck in the lower house, or in, in, in USA we call it the House of Representatives, Without the Speaker's consent and approval, no bill can be voted on. So what the Democrats are trying to do is they are trying to get around the Speaker through a what you would call a parliamentary procedure um, known as discharge petition, which basically means we can vote on a law without the approval or consent of the Speaker of the House. For that, we need 118 votes. That was my count. Um, mm -hmm. I, th I, th I think we have 199. There are 199 Democrats. If they all vote for it, um, we are still short 19 votes. So we need 19 Republicans to cross over and vote with us. That is highly unlikely because signing up and signing in on a discharge petition is considered to be an act of disloyalty. So okay. it appears to me very, I mean, everybody who, who knows a little bit about these procedures and processes, uh, everybody believes that it's going to be a very long shot, not just me. So we'll see, uh, but it's an interesting day, at least Democrats tried something. That's where we are with immigration reform. Uh, you have some questions from our listeners. Kamalji, please go ahead. Uh, yes, Rajiv. We've got a few questions here from our listeners. Uh, the first query here is uh, from a listener who's based out of Chicago. She says uh, she's been married to a U.S. Uh, citizen. Um, he hails from India, of course, and he's been here in the United States for a pretty long time, runs his own business, but she has uh, not yet got her citizenship. In fact, she's not applied for it. Uh, they have two children. They've been here for a while. So uh, sh the question she has is, how can she bring her parents over if she wants them to come and stay with her permanently as they are alone in India and there's no one to look after them? As a U.S. immigrant, she cannot apply for her parents. Uh, she mm -hmm. can apply only when she becomes a U.S. citizen. So really, okay. the first step for her is to naturalize. Once she gets naturalized, which typically in most places is, is approximately a six month process, more or less, it depends upon where you are. Some places it can be much more, but normally government shoots for the six months deadline. Once you have your naturalization, then you can apply for your parents. And thereon it's about a year long process to get them here. All right, okay. But here Rajivji, um, she also has a question that if she cannot apply for her parents, can her husband, um, you know, their son-in-law, can he apply for them? He cannot. He cannot? No. Okay, that's pretty surprising. Yeah. Um, okay, so Rajivji, that's the only way she can go about it? Unless she is willing to invest a million dollars or half a million dollars, depending upon the choices she makes, um, something like an investor visa, I doubt very yeah. much there is anything else she can do. All right, okay, okay. Uh, moving on to another question here, Rajiji, from a student who says um, he has been here in the United States. He came on a student visa, but he says, uh, can he continue to stay in the United States if his student visa expires? And how long can he do that, if he can? Okay, well, there are, there are so many sub-issues here that it's difficult for me to wrap this up without a, a, a more focused inquiry. Um, I'll just give you the general information. I don't know what exactly he's thinking. So let's first of all understand the difference between visa, mm -hmm. status, and maintaining status. Okay? okay. 
Okay, it's okay. important. A lot of people don't understand that difference, and it's very important to understand it. So when mm -hmm. you want to come to the United States and you are outside the U.S., first thing you do is you get admission into a school. They issue you a piece of paper called a Form I-120. I'm sorry, I-20. You take the I-20 and you make an appointment at the U.S. consulate in India, wherever you are, and okay. you apply for a, for a student visa. Okay. The consulate talks to you for all of 30 seconds. They look at your papers, the I-20, and then they stamp your passport with a student visa. Okay. That visa, visa always refers to a permission given by the U.S. consulate. That's the definition of a visa. Once you have the visa, that is a permission to come to the airport in the United States, to enter the border of the, or to come to the border of the United States. Mm -hmm. Once you're at the border of the United States, the U.S. government through CBP, Customs and Border Protection, decides how long you can stay. Okay. That is your status. Okay. Okay. Or okay. stay. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, once you come to CBP, typically for students, they endorse your, your extent of stay as not a particular period, but they'll say DS, duration of status, which means as long as you're going to school, you can stay. Okay? Right. okay. okay. So once you get your status, now you have to come and start attending school. If you stop attending school, you're out of status, even though your visa stamp is still good, even though your status as reflected in something called I-94, your mm -hmm. arrival departure record still shows duration of status and looks good. The fact of the matter is you're out of status. Okay? Oh, so okay. once you're out of status, it is very difficult to get back into status. Um, mm -hmm. There is something called reinstatement. If you have a very good reason why you fell out of status, you can try reinstatement going back to school. Uh, or you have to leave USA, get a new visa stamp and come back. So, question that was asked was, how long can I stay? Well, okay, okay. that question is very open-ended. I don't know what you mean. If you mean, after finishing my school, how long can I stay? The answer is, the grace period is, for F1 students, 60 days. Okay. okay. Um, okay. If you apply for practical training, which is permission to work in your own area, in your own field of work, Typically, you get it for 12 months. Okay. Once you get that, you can work for 12 months. And if you happen to have, uh, happen to be a graduate of uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, what is called STEM, then you can get perhaps another extension of 17 months. Okay. Once okay. all that time expires, then again you have 60 days to leave the United States. I hope that's what he meant. I am not sure. All right. Okay. So maybe in case there's any other query he has in mind, he can certainly reach back and we can take it up next week. Sounds good, Kamalji. Yeah. So Rajivji, these were the queries sent in by our listeners this week. Uh, good as always to have you on our show and thank you so much for answering all the queries. Always a pleasure and delight, ma'am. Pranam. Yeah. Pranam, Rajivji. Bye-bye. Every other Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we host... Um, free community conference calls. Everybody is welcome to join. Some people post questions ahead of time. You can take membership in our forums. Uh, all of the details are there on our website, immigration.com. You can take membership uh, ahead of time. And, um, you know, it's instantaneous. It happens right away. And post your questions beforehand. Or you can just log in. Uh, the phone number in all are provided, 202-800-8394. 12.30 Eastern Standard Time every other Thursday. We have uh, free apps for both Apple iOS platform for your iPhones and iPads as well as for Android. Just look for immigration.com, immigration.com, the period dot, and uh, the application should show up.